Okay, in this short video, I'm going to be looking at polymorphism. I feel this is a, a sometimes misunderstood concept. I'm going to introduce you to a little program of rows which defines some shapes, a triangle, square, and a circle. All you need to know for this program is a triangle. And a triangle inherits from shape. I'll have a quick look at shape. Shape simply defines a name and an abstract calculate area and abstract calculate perimeter method. So triangle which is inheriting from shape has to override the calculate area and perimeter and provide its own implementation of it. Also in the constructor I'm simply setting the name, the, the base property name to be triangle. There's also three other properties that set the side A, B and C. And if you look back on our program that we've wrote I've created a new triangle, I'm calling triangle, I've got side A and setting the, the value. And then I'm going to call the calculate perimeter, calculate the area and spit it out onto the console. So quickly run that, there you go. So it's got triangle perimeter 23, area 12.968. No problems with that. What I want to highlight is the fact that because triangle has some square, eh, triangle has some shape, a triangle is a shape. So if I wanted to, I don't have to refer to a triangle as a triangle at all. I can refer to it as a shape. Now, I just want to highlight with the IntelliSense here that as a triangle, I can access the properties side A, side B, side C, name, and calculate and calculate perimeter functions. Name and the two functions are um, described in shape. Side A, B, and C is applicable to a triangle. But if I want to, I can refer to a triangle, I can make an instance of a triangle, but refer to it as a shape, because it is a shape. So if I wish to do that, that's fine, that's not a problem. That's polymorphism. I can do that, but I can't refer now anymore to now to side A, side B or side C, because from in from now on, it's referred to it as a shape. Well, because shape has defined the calculate area and calculate perimeter, I can still call their methods and get the behavior of the triangle. Now, just to get this code there, I'm just going to comment this bit of code out, and I'm going to set on the constructor 5, 7, 11, so that specifying the sides of the triangle. And to make it clearer, I'm not going to change the name from being a triangle to being a shape. Okay, now if I run this code, I should get exactly the same behavior as before. Sorry, the same output as before. So, triangle perimeter 23 area 12.968. Even though it's no longer a triangle, it's a, it's a shape, or referred to as a shape. It is still a type of triangle. If I was to write triangle a equals shape as a triangle. And I'm going to say if sorry, just put it up, if a does not equal null, then a dot side a. So I'm going to write that out to the console. I'm going to put side a length and hopefully I get a value for it so there you go side a length is 5 so even though I've referred to it as, as a type of shape it is it is still a triangle and we, if we was to cast it back we can get the length of the side again no information is lost. Okay, so what good is that? Well, I'm going to do one more thing first before I show you what good that is. I'm going to show that that's an abstract class. It doesn't need to be an abstract class. It makes sense to be one, but it could also be a um, just a normal class which was inherited. As long as it's inherited though, Triangle will be the type it inherits. So if it's triangle, 
inherits from a shape, a triangle is also a shape. Now, if shape was to inherit from this interface, I shape, which defines how the calculate there, the perimeter, and the name. So we can do that. Implement I shape on here. In fact, we, we already implement these functions that are defined on I shape, so we don't have to make any changes in there. We can now refer to a triangle as an I shape. It makes no difference. Build that just to prove it. And you run it. You get exactly the same output. Okay. So to show one of the benefits of doing this, I'm just going to comment this code out and uncomment this code. Now this code is going to call set up some shapes, which simply creates a triangle, creates a, uh, creates a square and a circle, and adds them to a collection of type I shape. Returns that collection back, and that gets sent into display shapes, which will loop around all the shapes in the collection, bring out the types of I shapes, and show the name, the, the calculate the perimeter, and calculate the area for each shape. Now, look at this. I'm not referred other than when I instantiate them. I'm never referring to the shape as its concrete implementation. I'm never referring to the triangle as a triangle or the square as a square. I'm mean, referring to it as the super type. <laughs> Fancy name there, super type. But if we look at this on the Solution Explorer, square, triangle and circle, there are concrete implementations of a shape. A shape is a super type. And a super type of that is an eye shape. Now, let's quickly run this program now. You see, we have no problems running around that collection of eye shapes and printing out all that information. So, what we're doing there is programming to a super type rather than to an implementation, and that is actually a principle. So, I'm not gonna—I don't want to dwell on that just yet. I'm going to make a another little video and explain that in further detail. But the point is a polymorphism that we can refer to our concrete triangles and squares and circles as types of eye shape and shape. 